But as I said last week, I was surprised that six months after doing that press conference for the MMAAA and talking about fighters' rights and talking about getting skipped over for title shots, that here's TJ Dillashaw resorting to name calling and, 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 and calling DJ like a scared B word and all this stuff. Um, you know, kind of doing a 180 and quite frankly, coming across as a bit of a hypocrite, uh, accusing, you know, or, or, or trying to do what he was complaining about six months ago to Ray Borg. Ray Borg is the guy that Demetrius Johnson was offered. Ray Borg is the one who Demetrius Johnson accepted the fight against. And then Cody Garbrandt gets injured and TJ offers up his services to fight Demetrius Johnson. The UFC likes this fight more for various reasons, as has been spelt out, and they try to switch it, and, and DJ says, thanks, but no thanks. And this has been essentially been the rift between both the UFC and Demetrius Johnson. So um, I wanted to talk to Ray Borg and get his side of things because he's kind of the you know, the third man, maybe even the fourth, if you want to count the UFC as a man. You got DJ, you got the UFC, you've got TJ, and then you've got Ray Borg and see what's on his mind as we all try to figure out what's going on here. We talk about TJ cutting weight and being, you know, sort of in limbo here. Well, the same, the same is, is very true for Ray Borg. So let's find out. Let's go to the Skype machine now and welcome in top flyweight contender, Ray Borg, who is joining us for the first time on the program. Ray, how are you? Uh, I don't hear Ray. I see his lips moving. I only see his lips actually, but I don't hear him. Oh, wait. Say hello, Ray. Hello. Hey, there you are. How are you? All right, cool. I'm doing good, man. Just, uh, you know, relaxing, hanging out before I got to go do some training later on this afternoon. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Um, could I have you just uh, uh, sort of tilt your camera up? Because uh, yeah, there you uh, no, a little higher. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. That's perfect. I asked New York Rick in the back to make sure that he told the guests to do this, but clearly he did not. So uh, I just want to see your, your full face if possible. So this has been an interesting experience for you, right? I mean, you're so close to getting your first title fight in the UFC and you're now, you know, kind of stuck in the middle of this, this massive... Uh, this I was gonna call it a shitstorm. That's really what it is. How are you dealing with it all? You know, it kind of has become a you know a little bit of a, a shitstorm. You know, it uh it 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 changed gears real quickly. It went from like everyone, you know, me and TJ and Demetrius all bickering back and forth over who's gonna fight who to now it completely switched gears to to Dana and Demetrius beefing it out and kind of. It's kind of like okay, now I have to take a couple steps back and let their let them do their thing and sort out their issues before I, you know, can have any say so on what goes on next. So let me get your timeline here because we talked to Demetrius last week on the show. You may have heard it. Um, were you actually you or your management formally offered a title fight against Demetrius Johnson on August nineteenth? Um, I don't know how formally you can call it. Like it was never to the point where we were going to like be receiving a bout agreement within the next couple of days. I mean, it was more of a, you know, we're probably going to fight Demetrius. It's been talked about, you know, he's uh his name came up. We want We want the title shot. So let's, you know, we're, we're going to push for that. And it, it looked like it was going to happen. And then as soon as, uh you know, TJ and Cody fell apart, then the, all the plans fell apart. So, you know, it's more of just kind of been on a, been more on the the end of the stick as far as communication for for me at least you know I you know I've just kind of been trying to get ready the best I can just in case it does happen because you know times times ticking and you know times closing down on the the August nineteenth date which is when I assumed that it was going to happen because that's when I you know I had heard that they're going to Seattle so it's been more of a, a verbal agreement on my end. One of the things I so I, I'm I'm in the the camp of. You versus DJ makes more sense for the future of the division, for the current uh, health of the division. You know, if TJ wins, you might blow things up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I've said that I don't believe that TJ versus DJ sells that much more pay-per-views than you versus DJ. Do, do you agree with me here? I know this is a tough one because you're involved, but do you think that if, you know, promoted correctly, you versus DJ can do just as well as Demetrius Johnson versus TJ Dillashaw? Yeah, you know, I I think that could, I think we could sell just as you know just as well as TJ. The only reason why it's it seems so interesting to the fans is, 
is because TJ is a is a former champion. You know, he's he's got the beef going on with with Cody, so that's kind of accelerated his name a little bit. But TJ was barely becoming a draw when until he fought Dominic. I mean, he was he was a draw. He wasn't much of a draw at all. No one even thought he deserved the title shot against Burrell the first time. He was coming off of a loss to a Sun Sal and then one win. And some people didn't feel like he deserved the title shot. He went in there, you know, he performed, you know, excellent and won the belt. And then after that, people are like, okay, I like TJ. TJ's, you know, I'm going to start tuning in. But I don't feel it was really until the whole Cody thing that people were going to really start tuning in to watch TJ. So I feel, you know, if 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 it's going to be a, a difference in numbers, it's not going to be that big of a difference between me and DJ. I mean, I feel like I can sell the fight just as well as TJ can. I mean, I'm not corny. I'm not cheesy. I mean, if I'm going to talk some shit, I'm going to talk some shit. I mean, and it's going to be real shit. <laughs> right. It's not going to. It's not going to be this. You know, this jabroni. I'm going to punch you in the face type stuff. You know, I'm. I'm going to. I'm going to call it how I see it. Do you, do you have uh, a newfound respect for Demetrius Johnson? Because he, I mean, I, I know it's not like a personal thing between you and him, but he is going to bat for you, essentially. Like, the, the, the issue is here, he thinks that you deserve it more because you're the top guy in the division. How do you feel about, you know, what he's saying towards you and, and about you? You know, I, um, I, 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 I walk real lightly in, in this game. It's, you know, even in life, you know, I, the, the way I grew up, and the, the background I came from, trust is a big thing. So I don't really trust anybody until I truly know them and I know who they are. I don't know who DJ is. So although DJ is giving me this respect and saying he wants to fight me because of the rankings and he feels like I deserve it, you know, that's great. But at the end of the day, I also have to switch gears and, you know, throw up my defensive mode and ask myself, is DJ really respecting me or is he trying to use me as a pawn and a negotiation tactic to get the type of money he wants for TJ. Huh. So that flows through my mind as well, too. So until, you know, until I see something in paper that, you know, hey, DJ really does want to fight you because he feels like you've earned it and we're about to sign a fight between you two, then until then, I'm just kind of, you know, uh, I, I I separate my mind to, to really bank on things. Huh. You know, I'm not banking that he really wants to fight me because – from what I heard, you know, he wanted to fight me. And then I heard another article where he asked to fight Sergio instead because Sergio has uh, his brother's name behind him. So he's more marketable. So I don't know. I, it's, it's kind of a weird situation. I will tell you, I gained respect from DJ the way he talked about his legacy. You know, um, what goes outside goes on outside the octagon is what I'm more. I respect people more on how people present themselves outside the octagon, how they are. And, you know, his his respect towards his kids and his family and that being his legacy, you know, I gained a lot of respect for him because of that. What do you say to people who say uh, you're only on a two-fight winning streak? You've won five of six, but you did lose three fights ago, and you've missed weight a couple times during that stretch. So maybe you need to do more to get this title shot. What do you say in return? Um... I mean, the only thing I can say is that, you know, TJ's only on a two-fight winning streak, regardless if he was the champ. I mean, he arguably defended his belt once. I mean, it's really hard to call the Joe Soto fight a true title defense when Joe Soto took the fight on 24 hours notice, and it was his debut. So in my eyes, Burrell was really the, the, the only clear title defense that he had, and he's only won two fights since then. And as far as the weight issues, I actually don't mind when people, you know, bag on me and talk shit saying that I missed weight only because if it was if it was something that was like I was just being irresponsible and eating like shit all the time and not wanting to cut weight then I would you know then it would be different but really my weight situations was just me being so young I mean hell I'm only 23 and I just didn't have the knowledge to cut weight I mean I I tried to cut weight the way I did when I was like 18 years old and my body just doesn't cut weight that fast anymore. So I had to just learn how to properly do it. You know, I hired a nutritionist, uh, perfecting athletes who work with some of the top athletes in the UFC, like Owani and Jacek. And I even believe they worked with Dillashaw. And so, you know, I, it, it doesn't bother me because I'm fixing my mistakes. You know, if, if as long as you know what your mistakes are and, and you can fix them, then that's fine. How many fights have you been working with perfecting athletes for? Um, I, uh, when I fought Formiga was actually my first one. And, you know, it, that was by far my easiest weight cut. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was weird at first because <laughs> I even called my wife and told her, I was like, Hey, I think I might miss weight again. And she's like, why you were so low going into Brazil. I was like, I know, but I'm eating French toast and all kinds of delicious food on fight week. Fight week's supposed to be miserable. And then she's, and then I talked to my, 
my nutritionist, she's like, don't worry, Ray. Everyone always freaks out, but it, it made for the easiest cut I've had, you know, wow. in, you know, since I've been in the UFC. Wow. I've actually gotten to know, uh, Paulina, who's a part of perfecting athletes quite well. And, uh, it seems like everyone glows about, you know, what, what they do and how easy the weight cuts are when working with them. So that's another, uh, you know, nice, uh, compliment going their way. So, all right. So, so you have this situation where, you know, you're kind of in limbo as well, because, um, you know, we keep, we keep being told that uh, TJ is waking up at 143 and he's starting his cut. How much do you weigh right now? And and do you, like, if you were fighting August 19th, would you start to eat differently, diet differently if you were fighting in what, a little over two months time? Yeah. You know, I mean, if TJ is waking up at 143 right now, then he is actually a smaller bantamweight than I, than I thought, uh-huh. because I mean, I walk around, I, you know, when I'm in good shape walking around, like, and, and, you know, a good tone leaned out. I'm like 146. Oh, wow. So if he's wake, if he's waking up at and 146 is easy, easy, easy for me. I've done, I've done a weight cut. When I fought Chris Kalaitis, I started my weight cut at 156. Wow. So, I mean, and I made weight for that fight. I mean, so, but I've, I've learned to walk around lighter to make those weight cuts easy. I've been going into fight week. Oh, I went into fight week against Formiga lighter than I, five pounds lighter than I ever have before. So, you know, my, it's making an easy weight cut, but. It is the same thing. And I actually feel for TJ because I'm used to coming down from this weight to 25. I'm used to it, and I and I have the room to do it. But the more time I have, the better it is. But I also feel for TJ in the sense that if he's going to get the title shot, you know, he should probably know sooner than I do just because this, this dude's never been down to 25. So if he's going to make a crack at it, I imagine he's going to have to change his whole physique just to do it. And, you know, that's going to – be painful in a time, you know, uh, it's going to be painful to do in a short, timely matter. Um, one thing that's come up is, you know, DJ saying that they threatened to shut down the division. Are you worried that this is going to happen? This would affect you and many others. Yeah. You know, if, if, if this is the case and it, it, they do want to shut the flyweight division down, what sucks is we're all being punished for, for DJ. I mean, yeah, DJ, I believe DJ is one of the best fighters in the world. You know, I've been watching DJ since I was like 14 years old, but you know, he's just not a draw. I don't know why. I mean, I can't tell you why he's a great guy, but I can't tell you why he's a draw. And if the UFC is so stuck on the flyweights, never selling because of DJ, it just leaves us in a weird spot. Cause I believe we can sell. I mean, I believe the flyweight division's more exciting now than it has been in years. I mean, the whole top 10 is switching up. Uh, Ben Wynn just got a huge win, you know, the other day. It's going to be all new faces. You know, one of us can easily start to sell the division. And to be punished because DJ's been the face of it for so long and he doesn't want to, you know, do what Dana wants to do, it it sucks. You know, I try not to think about it. I try to just stay positive and move forward and, you know, hope for – hope for the best. But, you know, in the end, it is something you kind of have to worry about because, I mean, there's so many people pretty much going to be unemployed. You know, we're getting pretty much laid off, you know? Uh, What would you, if you became champion, how would you sell the flyweights? Like, why do you think that you could be a bigger draw than DJ? I mean, I'm exciting. You know, I, um... So is he. I've shown in fights before. Right? Uh, Yeah, yeah. I've I've shown in fights before that I'm not scared to go for it. But more than anything, I... I feel fans fans need some real some some they need to be real or uh, uh, a a champion needs to be real. They can't be talking shit uh you know on the mic and then go home and be a totally different person. Like once the fans find out that you're fake is when I feel like you lose like so for example John Jones. John Jones I feel lost a lot of fans cuz he presented himself as this great guy and then he got in all the trouble and people are like well he's supposed to be this Christian man. He you know he's not quite the great guy. I don't know if I want to be fans of him because he's not he's not even real. It might as well be WWE. And so I feel like if he would have approached it and embraced his inner crazy to begin with, you know, who knows? Maybe he would have liked it. People like Connor and yeah. he may not be doing out bad stuff in the you know in the media, but he's you know, he says some mean and funny shit. But right. I mean, I feel like I would just be real, you know. I would I I can talk some shit. I mean, but I'm only going to talk shit if it comes out of me, you know, I'm not going to go up and be like, Hey, you suck stupid. Yeah. Like something stupid like that. I'm not going to cause the ruckus, but when it comes down to me being pushed up against the wall, if someone's trying to bully me, I don't get bullied. And I, you know, that's when I come out of my shell and I think just being real would help sell the flyweight division. I think a lot of those guys need to just be real. Cause a lot of these guys, they don't want to, they, they want to keep that persona of a respectful fighter, which is great. So sometimes when someone's talking shit to them, they kind of ease back because they just got to be respectful. 
they're trying too hard to be respectful. But I know every fighter in this division, much less in the sport, has some ill feelings towards their opponent some way or another. Because on fight night, that person's trying to steal the other half of your check. You know, that's money for your family. So everyone feels some type of way towards their opponent. They just don't ever show it. Mm. Um, how have the fans been towards you? You somewhat famously called them turds uh, in the early goings of this whole uh, process. Has it been fun? Has it been annoying? How's it been on social media? Uh, social media at first, it was annoying. <laughs> it, I got really upset that people were trolling me. But and then I kind of just was sitting here like super bored didn't have anything to do during training. So I was like, you know what? I know how to troll people. I'm going to start trolling these guys. So I started trolling so many Twitter fans. And a lot of the stuff was funny. I kind of got stumped a couple times. But it's all in good fun. I don't mind it. I have thick skin. I mean, if someone's going to talk crap about me, like, for example, some guy made fun of me for having glasses. And then he ended up having wearing glasses. And I oh, call them four eyes. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just all in good fun. You know, I don't mind if... I don't mind people taking swings at me. I got thick skin. I mean, if you don't have thick skin in the sport, you might as well not be in it. So it's just been back and forth. I kind of like playing with the fans and trolling them as well. So where do things stand right now? I mean, as you sit here and talk to us, do you have any idea what's going to happen with this? You know what, man? I don't know. And to be truly honest, because I'm I'm, I'm only 23, dude. And yeah. if I don't get a title shot now, I'm not going to bitch and cry about it. I mean, hell, I got so much... I mean, I got so much more time in this game. If I was 30, I'd be like, Dana, give me my title shot now. I need my title shot now. But just being real, man, I mean, I would love the title shot with DJ. I feel like my skill set might match up better with DJ than TJ's. But at the end of the day, I, you know, I, a part of me wants to move on. I mean, if I don't want to stay in this limbo, I want to stay active is my biggest thing. I want to and I want to stay active to get better. I want to continue to get better each time. Each time I step in is I get a little bit better. I get a little bit more comfortable in that octagon. So I just want to stay busy and a part of me just kind of really wants to move on to the next thing and you know possibly figure out who's next, but you know wow. I'll still play this I'll see how this whole thing plays out, you know. I didn't expect that. I, I did not expect to hear you say that. Is that why what you tweeted when they announced the Henry Cejudo Wilson Hayes fight you were like uh, damn it or something like that because you were hoping if this fell through that you would fight one of those guys? Yeah, that, that was my only big concern with this whole DJ, TJ fiasco is that if that fight didn't happen, so what? I'm not going to cry. I'm young. I'm going to get my title shot regardless. I promise you, I'm going to get my title shot. But everyone started to get booked up. like, And yeah. I even like pulled up the UFC page, looked at everybody at the flyweight division, and, and everyone was getting booked up. So it kind of had me in concern as like, okay, if DJ fights TJ, where does that put me? Because there's... There wasn't much left, but you know, uh, um, you know, Moraga won last week. Ben Ben Win got a really good win, so you know, I it, who knows, man. I mean, but the the further this thing drags out, the more I just want to get on with my life and you know continue to fight. Wow, that is fascinating stuff. Um, I mentioned that I thought it was a little hypocritical on. TJ's part six months ago, he's talking about being a part of an association, not getting skipped over. And then he's kind of doing the same to you. Did you feel that way? Did, did you make that connection or no? Yeah. And then I made the connection that, you know, like DJ, DJ's claiming, you know, he's, he's putting all out this in the, he's putting all this shit out there in the media so he can start a revolution or, or whatever he's doing. So people can see the bullying tactics, whatever he's doing, whatever he may be doing, the reasons may he may be doing it if Co if TJ was so on board with his whole fighters association thing he would have backed DJ up but now he's just kind of calling him Minnie Mouse and <laughs> you know tweeting out tweets to get under his skin and plus you know he's talking about skipping in line he even talked about me not deserving a title shot saying that nobody I fought was in the top ten I mean I'm I'm pretty sure Formiga was number three right. and Smolka was top fifteen. I mean my last my last few fights have never been outside the top fifteen. At the time Scoggins was in the rankings, but now he well, he was at thirty five, so he dropped out of the rankings. But you know, it, for him to say I don't deserve it, I mean, why does he deserve it more than I do? Yeah. What has he done in the flyweight division? I mean, and I don't I don't know. He just kinda his personality's a little bit different from me. You know, we're I feel like we're raised from different types of types of era, eras and different types of standards and I, I feel a certain way about certain things and he feels a certain way about certain things. Do you have a deadline in your mind? Like if you don't find out about this, you wanna move on, you know, are you guys in communication with the UFC? Are they keeping you posted? At some point, some kind of decision has to be made here. 
Yeah, my manager, Ali, has been keeping me posted on, you know, pretty much everything. But, I mean, my my deadline was, like, a week ago. But, <laughs> okay. but that, I'm just... I'm just I'm just an impatient guy, you know. Yeah. I like to know when I'm fighting is the only thing. Even if it's not DJ, I just at least like to know when I'm fighting. So, I mean, I'm going to let it play out a little bit longer and then I'll talk to my management team and we'll see where we need to go from there. I mean, but you know, I'm whatever whatever happens is going to happen. I really don't I mean, I'm a small I'm a small fish in a big big pond. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't I can't text Dana and say, "Dana, give me give me the title shot." I can't text, you know, I'm not I don't have that power, so sure. I mean, I can only sit back and wait for things to play out. Must be kind of surreal to be caught in the middle of all this, right? I mean, the biggest story in MMA, and you're 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 you are a pawn in all of this in in, in many respects. Yeah, you know, it, it is. I mean, my name got thrown into the mix because you know I was next in line for a title shot. I mean, it was talked about. Uh, I, as far as my my knowledge, Formiga was supposed to be the next guy in line because you know he beat a lot of the guys in the division and then once i beat him then it was kind of switched to me and then it just time the way time you know unfolded it when i was thrown in the mix it ended up having to be a whole damn freaking revolution or whatever <laughs> dj wants to call it i don't know but it, it, i wish my name would have got thrown in the mix at a little bit different time when it wasn't possibly jeopardizing the whole division yeah i understand that well i appreciate your honesty in all this and and i hope it works out for you and uh you know what there is a silver lining. I think a lot more people know who you are now just because you were a part of this story. So I think there'll be a lot of interest in your next fight, regardless of who you're fighting. Thanks for coming on, Ray. Good luck uh, with all of this. And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, if you, if it's the title shot, I hope you get it. If it's any fight, I just hope you, you get back to action sooner rather than later. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right, there he is. Ray Borg stopping by. Great stuff from him. Uh, really honest stuff. And to be honest, I, I, I didn't I didn't expect him to say... You know, that he kind of wants to move on at this point. 